name is Fred Piper. I used to be a professor at Royal Holloway Information Security Group, University of London, and I retired five, six years, ten years, ten years ago, in fact. And I was a founding board member of ISSP and was on the board up until last December, I guess. Well, I've always run a consultancy company since 1985. And at the moment, I'm helping GCHQ with their standards for assessing MSCs in cybersecurity. I used to be a maths professor, um, doing pure mathematics. Then I got interested in cryptography. And then I was sent to Royal Holloway to set up a discrete mathematics group there. And um, we drifted in, drifted, I mean, literally drifted into cryptography. And then we were asked to set up an MSc in cryptography. And I thought it was too narrow. So I decided no. And we recruited to get some more general information security people. And don't ask me the difference between information security and cyber security or information assurance and cyber security, because I don't know. Um, they're just all words for the same thing as far as I'm concerned. At the moment, the popular press is almost as good a place as any, in the sense that everything's happening so fast and everything's changing, that there's almost a disaster every week. So people cannot be aware, cannot help but be aware of cybersecurity now. Oh yes, um, but maybe, um, I think the trend is going to be away from cybersecurity specialists and more into more people knowing some security. So most business degrees, most STEM degrees will have some cybersecurity in them now, or well in a few years' time. The big negative is the um, mistrust of government, the conflict between privacy and um, national security, which people really don't understand. And those that do understand are obliged almost not to talk about it. So it's, it can't be healthy until there's a public, massive public debate about what's possible, what isn't possible, what the real threats are. And the balance between, say, privacy and just the use of encryption is, um, at the moment, just imponderable. Because people are just not informed of the consequences. So, I mean, so just following up on so what, what do you see are the, sort of the immediate dangers then that we face? Well, the immediate dangers are, you've got, on the one hand, the security agencies saying, well, we need to basically be, be able to understand all communications between everybody in case they are bad. The um, privacy people are saying, no, no, that's an invasion of our privacy. We're good people, trust us. And the response quite naturally from the security agencies is, but we don't know who's bad and who's good. And therefore we have to look at everybody and there's confusion between the ability to do something and actually doing it. So my personal view is I want them to be able to understand all communications, but that doesn't mean they have to decrypt all communications they intercept. It means they need the ability to decrypt, which is rather different to decrypting. The ISSP is there because it's a Cybersecurity is a relatively new profession. It needs a sound base that the government and everybody is realizing that just like all other subjects, there are charlatans as well as experts. So there's a need for badges that distinguish the competent from the incompetent in all areas, just like medicine and so on. And the institute is there to establish competence or to be a, a badge that says these people are not just know what they're doing, they've done it. Universities are there to say people know what they're doing. And that's not quite enough. So the institute adds to the education program by saying 
It's not just that they know what they're to do, but they've actually proved they can do it.